This is going to change the way people fly over time. What I love about it is the economics. The fact that you can fly this thing for a quarter to a third of what it costs to fly a comparable size or a comparable aircraft, it saves money for the operator. It saves you know, emissions. Plus, you can't help but look at this thing and go, that is really cool, and I want to see that thing fly. Hey, we're out here at MBAA Base 2017, and our mission is really to go talk to the most interesting people doing the most interesting stuff. There's been so many changes to the industry over the last 12 months. We really wanted to boil it down, see what's going on, and get right to the heartbeat of what's happening in the industry. So over the last couple of days, I've been hearing about this, uh, this new aircraft design, the XTI aircraft. It's like a tri-fan that basically is like a Harrier but also like a, kind of like a business jet. I'm really interested in it, partly because selfishly, being right outside of New York, we're all trying to figure out who is going to be the company that's going to change the way people get in and out of the city. Obviously, the helicopters are there. They've been there for a long time, and it's just, it's never been super easy. You never could just basically helicopter out of the city and go for distance with a helicopter. So this airplane seems to be kind of the answer to that dream of having the ability for me to walk out of my apartment, jump in a plane right on the west side, and boom, go right off to Florida. And I'm really curious to, uh, to, to speak to these guys and see what's really going on there and what the timeline is. Hey, Nick Tarasio here with Bob LaBelle of XTI Aircraft. And I mean, I think I could just say it straight out, this is probably the coolest thing here, right? I mean, this is very different from everything else that's going on here. What is the largest uh, potential hurdle to getting this released on time? What technologies or, or what could be a bottleneck for you to get this well, out there? Just, I'll address that question in a second, but one of, the, one of the great things about this in terms of technology is though, it's an integration project. We're not inventing anything new. So we're putting existing motors, uh, generators, electric motors, a battery system, all that is what is the state of the art today, we're going to put that together. So we don't have to wait for the invention of anything new or the advancement. Some of it is just administrative. You know, you have a process that you have to go through uh, in order to get certified. You have to follow certain regulations and they take a certain amount of time and there's not a lot that you can do about it because of course it's all about safety. Yeah. How do you answer uh, I can actually back up and say, we were at Oshkosh earlier in the year, and yeah. it seems innovation is blossoming everywhere. The FAA is really standing behind it. They are. And it seems that a lot of people aren't emotionally ready for some of these things, that there's more fear of, oh, drones, and yeah. you know, this is different looking, right? So people get a little nervous about different looking. So how do you guys address the, the people who aren't emotionally ready? Well, we have to, I think it, if they're not emotionally ready, probably a lot of it is about safety, okay? So yeah. you want to get in something and have it fail. And that's why I love what we've done with the design here. We've changed it to what's called a hybrid, we call it a hybrid electric, not a new term, but it's got a gas engine powering generators that then power electric motors in each one of the fans. And there's redundancy built into that throughout. So there's three generators when you really only need one. There's two motors in each fan when you really only need one. So any point of failure there is uh, supplemented by a backup. Then on top of that, you have a battery pack which boosts the power in the vertical mode when you're lifting off and when you're landing. And the battery power itself isn't sufficient normally just to lift it, nor is the engine power. Together they lift it, but they each have an emergency mode they can go to if one or the other fails. So you can get back to the ground safely. And then in horizontal flight, if you have a failure, there's still 16 minutes of battery power available to fly you should be able to find a place to land. There's a glide because you have wings. Uh, and then of course the battery fails, it's no big deal. You've still got the engine and the generators working. And then if everything you know falls apart and you're sort of out of ideas, there's a ballistic, uh, a full aircraft ballistic recovery system, which is a parachute. So the whole aircraft comes down to ground. It's a proven system. So we feel like we have enormous safety built into this. And when I talk to customers, we've taken orders. They have those same questions. Uh, when I explain the system design to them, they feel a lot more confident. So you, you told me earlier that you've, you've got experience in the military, you've, you flew there as well. Uh, doing what you're doing now, what, what was the why that brought you to this? Like, what, what gets you up every day and keeps you really excited about the project? This is going to change the way people fly over time. I, what I love about it is the economics, and I don't mean in terms of us making money, but the fact that you can fly this thing for a quarter to a 
to a third of what it costs to fly a comparable size or a comparable aircraft in that category, Let's say light jet, turboprop, light to medium helicopters. So I really like the, the fact that with the hyperelectric design, uh, it saves money for the operator. It saves you know emissions a lot, a lot of uh, reduction in emissions. So that's what I really like about it. Plus, you can't help but look at this thing and go, that is really cool. And yeah. I want to see that thing fly. Yeah. So for, so for people who say that automation is going to put pilots out of jobs in the next 10 years, I mean, do you push back on that and say that that isn't the case? I'd say it may reduce the requirement for the number of pilots in a particular airplane, but every airplane is going to need a pilot. Uh, even just as, you know, maybe in a, a slightly different uh, mode of operation in that they're there as an operator more than a an actual manipulator, um, but it's still going to be a, a highly technical job, take a lot of knowledge. You still need to know everything about everything if something goes wrong, which is why we have those pilots there really even today. So I think uh, we're going to need pilots for a long time. Very cool. Well, thanks so much for speaking yeah. with us today. Thank this you. is really exciting Thank you. stuff. Great to meet you. It's really inspiring to talk to a guy like Bob. I mean, here's a guy that's been in the industry forever and, you know, had this incredible, you know, military pedigree as well. And you know, it's just seeing all these people that believe so heavily in what's changing and, and what they're investing in for the future. I mean, again, trading your time, even if it's uh, even if it's profitable, I think most people at that phase of their life uh, and the phase of their career, it's it's too much to gamble on something that you wouldn't really believe in. So it's really great to see these really really passionate thought leaders that are going to help bring something completely different to the market. It is going to be challenging, and and I really hope that they're able to to pull it off. I, I hope that by 2024 we see this thing starting to fly off the production line.